It's my feel good breakfast show. We know now more than ever the benefits of being educated and also aware of our own mental health and that of our loved ones are vastly evident. However, we know that professional mental health care is often very pricey and the infrastructure for this provided in some countries just does not make nearly enough of an impact. That's right and that's why we now say enter Professor Dixon Chibanda, a psychiatrist who recognised this very problem in Zimbabwe and has mobilised and trained a collective of community grandmothers to provide counselling on safe and inclusive park benches throughout his organisation called Friendship Bench. And he joins us now via video call to share more about this life-changing work that he does. Good morning, Dixon. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. What a great platform and just a, a way of people to address this. But maybe you can tell us a bit more about the access to mental health care that the general public in Zimbabwe has. So the access to mental health care in Zimbabwe is, uh, is not great, um, like most of uh, sub-Saharan Africa. Um, I'll just give you, let's just put that into context. So Zimbabwe has 13 psychiatrists um, and um, less than 12 clinical psychologists for sure. a population of about 16 million. <gasps> and so our best solution is to really work with non-professionals, which is what we do on, uh, on Friendship Bench, you know, empower them to provide services at community level. Now, grandmothers are extremely special, but I want to know from you, what role do grandmothers play in the Zimbabwean community structure? And how did you identify that using the reliable resource of a grandmother was the key to addressing the lack of mental health care professionals in Zimbabwe? Grandmothers are considered to be uh, the custodians of local culture and wisdom, and they are rooted in their communities. And I think this is not just in Zimbabwe, this is across Africa. And so empowering them with basic cognitive behavioral therapy skills just made so much sense in a country where we have such a massive brain drain. Now, since the inception of the program in 2006, what kind of growth and also just the impact have you made with the initiative and which areas of Zimbabwe do you guys operate in? Since 2006, we have expanded this program and we are now in more than 100 communities across the country. We are predominantly in Harare. In fact, we cover all the primary health care facilities in Harare, which is more than uh, 60. We are in Chitungwiza, which is another big city next to Harare, and in Gweru, uh, Kwekwe, and uh, we're now getting into Bulawayo as well. So we are expanding rapidly. Fortunately, we have had a lot of support from the government through uh, an MOU, which we signed uh, last year. This is amazing. I love that you are using grandmothers as, you know, they play a key role in the community. But do you mind telling us exactly what does it take to train a grandmother for this role of being a healthcare worker in your organization? Great question. It normally takes a month to train the grandmothers. Initially, we start off by establishing what we call core competencies. Ideally, you want a grandmother who is able to read um, because the screening tools are administered by the grandmothers. We want a grandmother who is able to use a mobile phone because often they have to communicate mm. with clients via mobile phone. And we also provide support via mobile phone. The rest is really up to our team in terms of empowering the grandmothers. You know, we look at things like empathy, the ability of a grandmother to listen, to create space for people to share their stories or tell their stories the ability for a grandmother to actually identify what we call a red flag, that is somebody who is suicidal or somebody who may need to be referred to the next level. And all of that is done in a very practical, iterative way. We minimize classroom approach training and we make it very practical for the grandmothers and that whole thing takes about a month and after a month they go into the field where they, the, the program is piloted and um, they are appointed or given rather a community that they work in with a supervisor. Professor, we also understand that this program has appeal outside of Zimbabwe's borders, understandably so, but maybe you can tell us a bit more about the plans for the organization to expand into other countries. 
We are currently um, predominantly in Zimbabwe, but we have a presence in Malawi, in Zanzibar, and in Kenya, and we've piloted the program in New York City through the New York City Health Department. We have established a 501c3, which is like a charity organization in the, in the United States. And we have done the same in the UK. So Friendship Bench is registered in the UK and the, in the United States. And we're using these two entities to launch our global expansion because our vision is to have a friendship bench within walking distance everywhere. So essentially, we still have a lot of work to do when you think of our, where we want to be in terms of our vision. That is a big goal and a beautiful one. Well, that was Professor Dixon Shibanda. We want to thank him so much. But of course, you at home, you can learn more about the inspiring work done by Friendship Bench. All you have to do is visit friendshipbenchzimbabwe.org.